Okay, the fly I'm going to tie now is one of my favorite general purpose flies. It's a, a sort of nymph and it's sort of a bait fish imitation. It really it has the elements of both and it really depends on how you fish it that determines what it's taken for. If you fish it like a nymph, uh, it will probably be taken as a nymph, a large stone fly nymph, for instance, or uh, it can be tied in all sizes and all colors. Uh, if you fish it as a bait fish imitation, uh, then it might be taken for a small bait fish. The feather I'm going to use, again, we're going to, we're going to stay with the, uh, the pheasant uh, skin uh, for a while and tie a few flies. We're going to turn this over. And the feather I'm going to use for the tail, uh, for the hala, is a, a very soft rump feather. Uh, if you could focus in on this area here, it's right down at the tail of the bird. In the, it's in the rump section and over the legs that you find this feather. It's a wonderful feather. It's very, very soft. You could also use these for uh, many, many, many purposes. In fact, uh, the pheasant is probably the most useful of all the birds. If you wanted to tie a soft tackle streamer with good blood marabou in a, a darker uh, a shade, you could use uh, pheasant marabou for the same purpose. Uh, you can see how soft you know, that is. And, and many of the uh, fibers are very, very thin. Lots of uh, Lots of good action, you know, in these feathers. You can tie a soft tackle streamer with these feathers. But for the sparrow, we're going to use the shorter ones. And this feather, as you can see, it may not look right now square, but it is. It actually is. Now I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to stroke these fibers back with my fingers. So that when they're gathered together, you can see that they're roughly square. And uh, I'm going to tie them in. So fairly short. I originally uh, tied this fly as a uh, combination bait fish nymph imitation. So most bait fish have a little, a little uh, tail that's rather squarish, and that's what this is supposed to to represent. So I'm going to tie it on like so. And often I will weight these flies with lead. Uh, I'm not going to uh, for this one, but I'm going to bring these fibers back over the hook shank slightly. You notice I've left plenty of room up here. We're going to have to have a collar and we're going to have to have a head, so I've left room for that. Then I'm going to bring my thread back over the hook shank towards the rear, tying down these fibers and making a slightly tapered body. That'll be my, my body, so I've accomplished that and I've also uh, accomplished a, a nice clean area up in up in uh, the head area. Normally, what I like to use for a body for body material is a combination of squirrel and and rabbit. But almost anything can be used. You can use hairs here. You can use poly dubbing. You can use uh, marabou. You can use uh, oh, lots of fluffy uh, fluffy materials as long as it's nice and nice and fluffy and not too smooth. I like a nice broken uh, uh, broken body with lots of short fibers and lots of long fibers. And that, that creates a lot of light uh, patterns uh, in the fly when you're, when you're fishing it. I just dub that right onto my thread as simple as that and uh, in, in sp sparing amounts. If you dump too much onto the thread it's very very difficult to to handle. So you dub it on in smaller amounts. That way it's infinitely easier to handle. You just wind it on as if it were thread. And when you run out of it, you simply add more. It's very, very simple. If you care to, you could use a, a, a dubbing loop uh, if you like a, a heavier body. But I generally find that this is uh, sufficient. So now we have a nice scraggly uh, body, evenly uh, Applied over the over the hook. Now we're going to take a another feather from the the pheasant from the back area, and this will be our collar. Let me get another feather here. <coughs> you know, some of these don't want to come loose. You'll notice that this feather. I don't know if 
if you can close in on it just a little, also has a, a smaller feather attached to the base. You can see that clearly here. This feather here is called an aftershaft uh, feather, and all birds have them, and it's a very, very useful feather. We'll be using a lot of this feather. It's not to be thrown away, it's to be used. And I'm going to just pluck this off and set it, set it aside for later use. Then I'm going to strip the barbs, the soft barbs, away from the stem, like so. And I can save these. I can make another a couple of flies out of that material, and probably will. Now we have a feather that should be at least as, as long as the end of the tail, should reach at least uh, to the end of the tail. I like it slightly longer, so I, I've picked one that is slightly longer than the head of the tail. You tie it in on top of the hook shank, always, again, with the concave side down, clip away the excess, be sure you clip away the excess, and then you just take your hack pliers. those things have a life of their own. Separate these fibers, making sure you grasp only the stem. And wind it. And while you're winding it, just brush those fibers back slightly towards the rear of the hook. Take only one turn or one and a half turns of uh, hackle. It's not to be a bushy fly. It's supposed to be fairly sparse and not all that overdressed. Make sure all the hackles are equally, equally distributed around the hook shank so you, you don't have all of them on one side of the hook and uh, none on the other. Now, if you remember that feather we just used, the aftershaft, I'm going to take a couple of those and we're going to form a head out of these aftershaft feathers. You're going to just tie them in at the butt. The tip itself is very, very fragile. Very, very fragile. And will break. So you might as well just break it off with your fingers. It can be very frustrating to work with. One of the easiest ways to work with this is to wet your fingers slightly, thumb and forefinger, and just twist the tip of this feather so it's slightly damp, and that way it's less likely to break on you. And you just take three or four wines with this feather. Fill up, you've got to fill up that whole area. So it might take two feathers to use. Uh, that you must use on this fly. So I've used one. Now with my thumb and forefinger, I'm going to just wet these fibers and move them to the back, and that way they're out of the way. I still have a nice clean area uh, to work on. And I'm going to cover up all that thread with this next fiber. Larger flies will take two or three of these uh, feathers. Smaller flies will take only one. I tie them in sizes uh, from two down to about uh, 14, that's about the smallest you can tie, uh, tie this on. Right up to the eye, I go right up to the eye with these fibers. Wet my fingers again, get them all going back and out of the way. When they're wet, they're much easier to control. And I like to have a very, very small head in the front. Not, not a large head of thread, but a small head. When I'm tying these uh, for fishing, I, I would not use red, of course, I would use uh, uh, gray to blend in, uh, you know, with the hackle, so it's not noticeable. If I'm tying with red thread, I'm generally tying it for demonstration purposes or to, um, as a reminder to myself that the fly is weighted, uh, for instance. And there you have a pattern, a very, very effective pattern called uh, called the sparrow. I've taken trout, trout on it up to about. Uh, Six and a half kilos. I've taken I've taken sharks on it. Hi. I've taken uh, tarpon, bonefish, almost any fish that uh, swims. You know, I've, I've had uh, I've take this fly. It looks like nothing and everything. It looks like uh, life itself. It could be taken for a nymph. It could be taken for a a bait fish, depending again on how you fish it, because all the elements are there. It's an impressionistic. Uh, type of pattern that has a lot of uses. And if you want, you could even, I suppose, grease it and fish it uh, semi-dry. You, know, you can tie it very large, and again, you could tie it very, very, very small. Looks like a lot of things. And it has
has a good action in the water and a very enticing one. The hook I've tied it on is a Mustad 9671, which is a two X long, two extra long uh, uh, shank, and uh, it's a fairly heavy hook. It's, I think it's two X uh, heavy as well. It has, gives you a nice length and a nice weight. It can be tied on any style of hook, and I, I use a lot of different styles, but this is the one I, I originally started using and, uh, and use most often. In salt water, I'd use a, a stainless uh, hook in, in a must add 34007 or 3400, uh, or 3407, or one of the longer stainless, uh, stainless hooks. And that, uh, that is a pattern called the sparrow.